Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to respond to a couple of the comments made by my friend and my distinguished colleague, Senator Durbin, with whom I have a great relationship and have for the entire eight years that I've been a U.S. Senator. With regard to Howard Nielsen, I, I want to be very clear about something that was mentioned. He was not the author of that memo. It's undisputed that he was not the author of that memo. Uh, and in fact, uh, we, we have uh, in front of this committee a letter written by J Professor Jack Goldsmith. Uh, Professor Jack Goldsmith was the lawyer who withdrew that memo uh, when he was at OLC. And he writes uh, a glowing letter of recommendation about Howard Nielsen uh, and talks about what a careful, honest, uh, hardworking, uh, and decent attorney he is. I, I too, have known Howard for um, over 20 years. Uh, I've worked with Howard, and I know him to be an attorney of unusual character, intellect, and uh, someone who proceeds with great caution. It is a, a matter of uh, undisputed fact that he was not the author of that memo. Um, some have supposed that he was, because while at OLC, as an OLC attorney, he was from time to time called upon to answer dis discrete questions, but he didn't write that memo, and he was recommended strongly by the OLC lawyer who withdrew that same memo. Um, while we're on the topic, uh, you referred to Eric Murphy also. Eric Murphy is also a friend. I've known him for many years. He and I clerked together at the Supreme Court. He was clerking for Justice Kennedy uh, while I was clerking for Justice Alito. Uh, he is a, a lawyer of great character and integrity. And now, uh, you describe him as someone who has litigated aggressively to restrict voting rights. I just completely disagree with that characterization. I, and, and unless you're willing to say that any time there is at issue a law trying to protect the integrity of a state's voting system, that any lawyer who represents a state uh, is somehow voting to restrict the voting rights of minorities or of any group of Americans. Uh, I, I don't see how that can possibly be a fair characterization, and I know that not to be a key a fair characterization uh, in the case of Eric Murphy. Um, you also mentioned uh, Wendy Vitter, uh, who I've known for many years. I, I thought Wendy's performance before this committee was, uh, was candid and was strong. Um, she's someone who um, believes firmly in the rule of law and is willing to interpret the law on the basis of what it says not on the basis of what she wished that it said. And I, I consider to, her to be a, a well-qualified nominee. There were others you mentioned, but <clears throat> I do think it's important to point out here, you can't openly, publicly question a nominee about that nominee's religious beliefs, about what he or she believes to be sinful conduct without subjecting that nominee to ridicule and simultaneously demeaning some of the fundamental tenets of our constitutional republic. You can't ask a nominee questions like those to which Naomi Rao was subjected just the other day and those that I've seen asked of some of our other nominees and then later ask the question, how did we get here? Anyone who believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or of any other God for that matter, if asked before this committee or any other publicly about his or her religious beliefs, is being subjected potentially to public scorn and ridicule. If, if you're, uh, for example, uh, from any sect of Christianity or Judaism, that means that you believe in a God who delivered stone tablets to Moses. If you publicly cross-examine someone on the basis of those religious beliefs, in a secular context, context where we're talking about secular beliefs, you are inevitably exposing that person to ridicule, especially when you consider that there are a lot of specific beliefs that 
require a more nuanced answer than a simple yes or no when you're asking about the existence or lack thereof of a sin. I can't fathom a circumstance in which it's ever appropriate for us to ask a nominee about his or her religious beliefs about whether X, Y, or Z is a sin, with the possible exception of a circumstance in which you're trying to ascertain whether that nominee might need to recuse him or herself in the case of a judicial nominee in the event that uh, the nominee's <coughs> church or synagogue or other faith community were involved in litigation. Uh, but that's a fairly narrow, very specific question. Beyond that, I think it's wildly inappropriate, and it's something that I, I hope and respectfully implore my colleagues of both political parties to avoid in the future. As a religious minority myself, as the descendant of uh, a group of religious minorities who were ordered exterminated by the governor of Missouri on October 27, 1837, I urge you to consider the fact that we should never expose someone to shame, ridicule, or scorn on the basis of their religious beliefs. And I ask that we refrain from doing so in this committee. We should never again ask someone what they regard as a sin or other particulars of their religious beliefs. It's nobody's darn business. It's certainly not the business of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.